Hey everyone, and welcome back to At The Table, the show that asks you to pull up a chair, pick up your books, and join us at the table. And we, as promised, are going to do a quick character build for you. It's been a little while because life and all this content is awesome and crazy, so please pick out your books, get your crazy ideas together. We cannot wait to see what we make together. And before I forget, let me introduce my man, Mr. Michael Powell. Mr. Michael Powell, please tell who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. As PJ said, I'm Michael Powell, and you can find me all over the internet on my social media, which is at Mr. Kapow. That's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. And how about you, PJ? My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet as PJ.McGaw, but not Twitter. I don't go on Twitter often. And you can find me right here on Nat20 Productions Official on Twitch. And without further ado, get your papers and pencils. It's time to create. Let's get to it. So, we have a few NPCs from the past. We have the uh, Tengu Necromancer Archaeologist. We have the uh, Cobalt Bard named Cobalt, uh, whose last name is Scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are also, I believe, a dragon disciple. So they go from an enemy Cobalt into a giant powerful dragon. And we also have the Rat Folk Swashbuckler, Pirate Queen, who lacks her receipts. Mm -hmm. So we have those three characters. So am I forgetting one? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Oh, yeah, the Tengu Duskwalker. Uh, that's Necromancer. Red Folk Swashbuckler. Cobalt. Rubble Without a Clue. All right. So, we have those three. Now, the character that we want to make here doesn't have to be the Oracle. Let's come up with some really fun ideas about NPCs. Maybe, um, let's see, what's a class we haven't touched on? We did Bard. We did... Uh, swashbuckler, we did uh, necromancer slash wizard. Um, Maybe so we want to do like a rogue, we could do a druid. We could do an alchemist. There's a lot of fun things with alchemy. Uh, so get in the chat and come up with your ideas. Uh, we're going to be here at about 6.15 or so, kind of crunching this out. We could, we could and also do remember, this will be added to the voting. True, we could do a special kind of investigator, like a Dresden type, or like, uh, like those really old awesome like gumshoe detectives because i'm i'm pretty certain that like by 2022 i'm just i'm i'm guessing but i'm certain with my guess that we're gonna start getting gunslinger rules and gunslinger classes because gunslingers were kind of a huge part of pathfinder first edition so let's i mean at the very least uh inquisitors i would i would hope so oh, give me my inquisitor shuni investigator Oh, yeah, Shuni. That's the uh, yeah. the pug race, right? Yeah, the dog people. Ooh, I, I, you know, I love that because what's more perfect than a dog investigator? You know, it's like Scruff McGruff, but as a pug. Uh, we can also do, uh, right. what is it, uh, oh, God, McGruff the crime dog. I, I love that. I know, um... Oh, my brain is farting. I either need more coffee or less coffee. I'm not sure which. Um, but I, lo I love that just because, again, the whole Scruff McGruff crime dog. And, and and they have so many great, like, natural perceptions and all these other, like, like fighting clues by scent. So we have the shooting investigator. I like that. Does anyone else have any other ideas and we can kind of also them? keep in mind, we have a buttload of archetypes now so that we could combo stuff with. That's also true. Um, we have a lot of archetypes, uh, organizational archetypes, and uh, classic archetypes. Like, I feel so if we, we do Sh Shoni uh, Investigator, he has to be a bounty hunter as well. And a bloodhound. Ooh, yeah, I really do like that. Investigator and bounty hunter. That That is kind of fun uh, to think about. Um, I don't know, Chet. What do you think about uh, an investigator, bounty hunter, Shuni boy? You could also do, uh, there's Gladiator. Gladiator's, oh, I I totally blanked that Gladiator is an actual dedication. Yep. Um, also, uh, Pirate. Pirate is a dedication yep. as well. So you could be a swashbuckler pirate rat oh. with, uh, with I our just thought, high I moves. Just, I just thought of something. What if we did a Shuni fighter slash Viking as part of Lyrian Voss's crew? A good boy, a good boy. A little uh, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> be like a giant sheepdog. 
Oh, that's so adorable. Now I'm imagining a bunch of Vikings, and then there's this one other Viking who's just this giant St. Bernard, shield raised, axe poised, and his tail is just wagging like crazy. And they're like, well, I actually really want to do that now. I like actually really effect. want to do Shoni, take the Shoni uh, part that Mal suggested and make a fighter Viking part of Lyrian Voss's crew. Because I think that would be amazing. It would be a lot of fun, not going to lie. I think that could be really cool to see. Uh, also also cool to see like dog people kind of mixed in more with human people. I, I don't know too much of how uh, Pathfinder is trying to integrate the Shuni people. Um, but it looks like they're pretty close to human beings. Yeah. They're pretty pretty common amongst them. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so it looks like right now we're going with Shuni Investigator. That's not a bad concept. Let's run with that a bit. Uh, Shuni Investigator. Now, Malice, I would love your brain on this one. Tell me about the Shuni Investigator. What is their... Uh, do we want to make them a Shuni Investigator Bounty Hunter or just a Shuni Investigator? Please put it in checks. I think the Bounty Hunter could be a fun little side gig, but... What was your concept? I want to hear your thoughts. Or what would be really cool is make or make them a Shuni investigator scrounger. Scrounger. Maybe. So maybe like as a side job to like fund their investigating offices, they yeah. uh, they like go out and, and get like junk metal or junk stuff. Like, like you know, you know how dogs like Shuni. bring you like random stuff all the time. Like, where the heck did you find this? Yeah. Well, I love, I love the um, thing you put there of the Shuni Edgeguard Detective. I'm wondering if that. Um, I think Edgeguard is. Or, I'm sorry, Edgeguard Detective. That's a. It's an, I, th- I think so. If it if it is in second edition, I don't believe I have the book for that yet. But oh, I, uh, I, I think I think uh, Malice is ta- might be talking about. I'm just my theory. Uh, Edge Watch Detective, which is part of the Pathfinder world. Ah, uh, okay. Let me let me uh, take a quick look at that because, because there's only a, two dedications that start with the letter E. Is that, uh, what book is that in? Uh, it's part of the Pathfinder 157 Devil in the, Devil at the Dreaming Palace. Oh, it's one of those really awesome, like, uh, module books. Got yeah. it, got it, got it, got it. All right, so that's on the, uh, Archives of Nethys, which, by the way, is a really great, um, uh, website for Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2E, and Starfinder information. The Pathfinder 2nd Edition SRT is really good too. However, there are some details or information that's not very clear, uh, not easy to find, and so the Archives of Net, this is really a really good secondary There's, venue. Oh, I just one. had an idea. What if it's a Shuni detective slash animal trainer? It's a good boy with a good boy. A good boy with a good boy. That's... That's so meta, though. Like, I am a dog, and I train dogs, but like the little dog. And also, is, is aren't Shunis like a like kind of like the it's size a, of gnomes or halflings? So they could actually city. ride a dog. Absolutely. Say that again. Oh, I said, uh, aren't Shunis like a smaller race, kind of like halflings and gnomes? So wouldn't they be able to ride a war dog? So it's a war, it's a Shuni riding a war dog. I don't know. Uh, I have to check. I, I haven't seen the full stat breakdown. I've seen pictures and I've seen some other things. Um, one of our, our uh, big fans of the show, Reap Psyche, was really excited about them. Uh, was really excited about them, and, and they've been talking a lot about it and, and showing them in our Discord. So if you have more information on the Shuni, I'm sure Reap Psyche would love to see it. Uh, here we go. Edge Watch Detective. Uh, Detective 4, Edge Watch 4. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, small size. Malice is saying small size, so a small, a small Shuni could ride another dog. God, oh my god! Really I just yeah, so... a Shuni, a Shuni on top of another Shuni on top of another Shuni, three Shunis in a trench coat. Three it's Shunis McGruff the in crime a dog. Coat. I don't know what's worse: three Shunis in a trench coat or three goblins in a trench coat. <laughs> um, 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this uh, edge, edge watch detective thing. Um, yeah, so yeah. So let's do this. Uh, obviously, like Malo said, you could easily uh, restructure this archetype for any other city. But I do kind of love that there is this hardened gumshoe detective that thrives in like the, the, the sin of the cities. And they are a three foot tall pug dog that solves crimes, you know, for the dark heart of the, of the urban jungle. I love it. it. Makes me laugh. I adore it. Does it Let's go with that. Like, I think I think we have so, a winner there, Malice. Does it have to be so edgy? Like I kind of want to have a shooting that's like he just he sleeps all the time. People just like constantly have them wake him up. It's like oh yeah yeah I'm on the case I'm on the case. Oh, well no, that that that's the best part. That's the bait and switch. It's like look at this adorable pug and he's like drinking coffee and chain smoking. He's like you don't know the things I've seen. I've well, seen children mad. I've seen mafias. Like what if it's like a, not a pug, but a sheepdog, where they have the hair right down over their eyes, so you're not sure whether they're sleeping or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's definitely room for that kind of a character. I can, because right now, with the Shuni investigator, Edgewater detective that uh, Malice has, has started, I can see him now like this old, gritty, pulp fiction uh, detective in New Jack City, you know? Oh, um, I was just saying, make him like Droopy? But I want to do him like one, one on top of that. Remember in uh, Five Goes West, the the sheriff dog in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his name? Jasper Sasparilla or something like I that? I think so. He's the one who taught the cat character to do the lazy eye. That is right, and I think he also uh, gave him his first hit of whiskey or hooch, mm -hmm. and it made it made him like turn red and fly to the sky. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to make that character Mike now. Mike Hammer. Mike Hammer. Yeah, Mike Hammer is one of those. Isn't he one of those like really? I want to say like one of those really uh, gritty Pulp Fiction detective people. I might mm -hmm. be wrong. Well, let's say this. Let's. I think we have to get ourselves down to a question of personality and story or a theme, right? Mm -hmm. If we have a shooting investigator, Edgewater detective, that does present a very interesting picture. And we can either go with that in a, a comedic or ironic sense, or we can work against that type with a really counterintuitive kind of sense. So it could be like, you know, a, sh a shooting investigator, Edgewater detective, dark, gritty, harsh world, and let, and they're just droopy dog. I used to do a much better droopy dog. I can't do it anymore. Um, PJ, PJ. Um, 50s of what, what, what's yes. that one act? What's that one actor that was in the, the cowboy in um, the Big Lebowski? What's that actor's name? Sam Elliott. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sam Elliott. Sam oh. Elliott as a shuni. Oh okay, no! Uh, um. I think I think you hit on something earlier. One of those hounds, but one of those really bristly hounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, like, yeah, like 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 the, so the, like the the dog character from Five O Goes West. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Malice is suggesting we can either make this dog like Mike Hammer, or make him like Mr. Magoo. Oh, I, 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 I don't like know which Mr. One Magoo. I like more. Mr. Magoo with the dog. Like I said, I, I'm gonna keep pushing you. Right? The dog from Five O Goes West. Cause I just want to do the, you, you that. Really I just want to do that one line. The lazy eye. Well, here's the best part. Just because we make, just because we're making a Shuni investigator, Edgewater detective, doesn't mean we can't have a. Well, I don't know about Shuni. I think Shuni right now is specifically defined as pug, which I'm not too sure of. No, I don't However, think so. I, there's I think an amazing. Uh, really? I don't believe really? so. Really. I was gonna say literally I, everything well, I've seen at least from the them images, has been cut. There's some leeway image-wise for Shunis. Ah, look. So looking at the script, the description of Shuni, um, they resemble squat bipedal dogs. Uh, they're mistaken for weak, <laughs> insular pacifists. Uh, let's see here. They have flat noses and faces. Um, I, I think I think they're all pugs. 
like all variations of pug and small pug dogs. However, there is a D and D five E compendium called Pugmire, ironically enough, and they have rules and builds for things like shepherds, Labradors, uh, Dobermans, um, hounds. Uh, they, yeah. Really quick, sorry to interrupt, but uh, according to Shuni Heritages, there is Bloodhound Shunies, Fish Seeker Shunies, Paddler Shunies, and this is definitely has to be like a Sheepdog Shunie, Thick Coat Shunie. Where do you see that? The Heritages. I'm looking at the Heritage in 2nd Edition, and it just says they're all squat, fat, uh, flat faces and noses. I'm I'm looking at it right here, saying that there's there's bloodhound, fire fish seeker, peddler shoonies, and thick coat shoonies. Well, here's I, here's a better idea. Let's put all this information in the Discord chat, so people who are watching this channel and watching us uh, in the Discord, you can look at this, and we can just go crazy with all these different types of dog animals and dog and, and shoonies. But as as I was saying, uh, more more to the point, because uh, right now looking at the shuni in um, second edition D, uh, Pathfinder, it says it's, it's mostly just Pug, but there's a fifth edition um, compendium called Pugmire, and they have all sorts of dogs, uh, dog breeds that kind of work as like your ancestries or, or for lack of a better word, race. And um, so I would not be surprised if things grow and they become more specific and not more like a weird variety of, of Pug, at least from what I'm looking at in at this, Looks like it's just. Uh, um, when, you, when you're there, who knows? That may grow. Click on Shuni Heritages. Uh, click on the the word Shuni. No, Shuni Heritages. Uh, it's right next to don't Shuni see that on the page. But I think we're Shuni. I see Shuni Mechanics. For some reason, it's not showing me Shuni Feeds or Heritages. Oh, oh, I see. I see it now. I see it. Okay, cool. Um, Bloodhound. Uh, Fish huh. seeker, peddler, thick coat. It, thick dog is a sheep dog. Thick coat has to be a sheep dog. You know, I don't honestly think it is because it, it's talking about a special physical ability. It, it's not talking about a change in. Well, either way. If you want to, you can certainly play it that way. Um, I will wait until a book comes out that says it, but I think we are missing the point. Um, so we're making this Shuni. Uh, Malice, Bloodhound Shuni Investigator. Cool, all right, there we go. So we got a Bloodhound. Shuni Investigator Detective. Okay, so we got the Bloodhound Shuni Investigator Edgewater Detective, or Edgewatch Detective. Um, so I'm assuming, kind of going with what Michael is saying and going with what Malice is saying, we want this character to look like a bipedal Bloodhound. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's the case, uh, then let us again figure out personality, goals, what's their daily life like? Obviously, they're an investigator. They want to solve crimes, and they're a detective, so they want to do it with their wits and their penchant for finding clues. But... Um, like, uh, do they have any struggles? Do they have uh, any themes or messages to tell the world? Do they have what led them on the path to becoming this investigator detective? These are all the questions we should answer. There's Sam in the Elliott. Next, like, Fifteen minutes. Enough said. <laughs> Sam Elliott's just a cowboy uh, archetype. I, there's a, what? <laughs> He's one of those I mean, tired, talk, retired, like sure. retired, retired cowboy. Okay, so there's something. He's retired. He's retired, and he's doing this because it's it keeps his senses sharp. Maybe. Or maybe people just keep bugging him because he's actually that good. Okay, so now I guess the question is, is he just, he just wants that to sleep? Good? He wants to sleep in the porch. Just like, he's retired. I'm retired. I'm off the force. Like Murtaugh. He's Murtaugh when he finally retires. Okay, okay, okay. So, so again, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to ask the question. So, he's retired, and he's good at what he does because he used to do it before he retired. Is that mm -hmm. kind of the angle we're, we're working at? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's make. Let's. Yeah, you know, like like Murtaugh, like, oh man, I gotta retire from this. I'm getting too old for this S word. <laughs> yes, pretty sure I have sworn a little bit in our last one, so I yeah. apologize. Uh, retired. So he used to be. First of all, are we are we good on the gender? You want this to be a man? It could be a woman. It could be it could be non-binary dog. I mean, I'm not I'm not judging either way. Have you seen the TV show The Collector? Great question, Malice. I don't believe I have. Me neither. Uh, but please tell us in the chat more about The Collector and where your thoughts are going. I really wanted to see where you're, we are on about. I think it might be really good. But yeah, um, at least in my mind right now, he is a male, kind of. You know, like I said, I'm not envisioning a cross between Murtaugh and Sam Elliott. <laughs> In my mind. I kind of see that. <laughs> Malice, <laughs> I'm too old for this shite. <laughs> I'm too, now, now I'm seeing an Irish setter like, oh, I'm too old for this shite. Um, all right, so he's, he's retired from a detective unit of a guard. I think that's probably the, yeah, sure. the safest way to kind of move this in here. Uh, but he keeps, now, is he, is he getting begged to get back into action, or does he do this on the side to entertain himself? You know, being that he's old and he wants to keep his senses yeah. sharp. I think, if anything, he does it because people keep bothering him. Like, he wants some peace and quiet, but people keep bothering him. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. They keep dragging me back in. <laughs> Maybe. I think that could be cool. But it does eventually get to a point where, like, each time he's put into a case, it has to be another big and outlandish pull to get him to do it, you know? Because, like, he doesn't want to. You know, he doesn't want to invest a ton of his energy and time into something, so it's going to make it that much harder to continuously put this character into action. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe, so maybe he, do he does it because either people are calling in favors that he owes, or it's his friends who's asking for his help, and he's one of those people who can't say no to a friend, really. He'll, he'll, he'll moan, complain the entire time, but he can't say no. See, that? that's good, because what that gives us now is a personality and and a, um, a, a pathos or whatever whatever thos that's mm -hmm. correct for that. So, okay, so he, he doesn't want to do this anymore, um, but he's loyal. He's a loyal boy. Yeah. He's a good loyal boy. He's a good boy. And he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's the goodest boy. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's always ready and willing to do this for a friend or yeah. anyone calling in a favor. And what I like is that now this, this bespeaks this amazing career of this giant book of, of favors. Yeah. And Malice he complains the entire about time. The hunt. Yeah, he complains yeah. about the entire time. Like, you know what? I could have been at home right now laying in the sun. You know what? With with a nice sandwich and maybe a water bowl or something. I was gonna do my crossword and do my Sudoku and watch Mori, and you're taking me from my Mori. Exactly. He's Matlock. I like. He's yes, he is, and I I love Malice said that he's all about the hunt. I think, I think Malice is on something here. I think that's this character's secret, even though he hates doing it. The, the reason why he's been doing it for so long is that the hunt, it, it, it's always, it's, it always calls to him. It's always the thing that yeah. he loves the most about it. Him and his cat folk sidekick. What, uh, uh, Katzen instead of Watson? Yeah, uh, Malice is saying, Malice has posted him and his cat folk sidekick. All right. Now we have a very interesting two-for-one situation. Uh, let us, let us, uh, flesh out this character a bit more, and then let's go to that Catfolk sidekick, because I feel like sidekicks are amazing potential for narrative, especially to aid the, I just the main character. I, I just thought something I just want to address. Maybe he's married to his Catfolk sidekick. It's his wife. I'm just seeing a big, fluffy cat named Precious. Maybe. Now we're getting into kind of the Thin Man territory, where it's this husband-wife duo that solves crimes, you know, each in their own individual way and skill. I do kind of like the idea that that he's married and has this cat folk partner, uh, and that they solve crimes together, 
and that they're potentially two very different people that maybe work she's very a, yeah, well. Maybe she's a detective in a sense where she's like Miss Maple from the BBC uh, detective story. Potential. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's a, I think uh, the character is a housewife detective. One second, I'm still making a mm -hmm. bunch of notes about this guy, the dog guy. Now, here's a question. Do we want, and this is fine either way. I don't believe there's any wrong way to answer this question. Do we want this to be a traditional or mm -hmm, traditional? Do you want this to be a heteronormative pairing, or do you want this to be a homo no homonormative pairing? That doesn't really work, but let's go with that homosexual pairing. Do we want the cat to be a man, woman, non-binary, whatever? I don't think it's... Mm, honestly, like I said, all I, uh, the only thing reason I have in my kind of mind's eye right now is a big fluffy cat with kind of a housewife house coat. And just kind of sprout. She's the common sense of the duel. Okay. Um. One second. I'm making a voice that the the dog kind of sounds like Sam Elliott. Mouse is saying hetero. Okay. Well, Mouse. I could go character. either way, but I just had in my mind's eyes already kind of like that, you know. I mean, I just, I would just rather offer the idea. I would yeah. rather offer the the, the flexibility yeah. of options as opposed to just automatically that, go down that path. That's fair. There's nothing, that's fair. Because there's nothing that's wrong fair. with any any yeah. pairing anyway. Yeah. I just you know put it out there. All right, so uh, let's go back to the dog before we get into the cat. Um, no, it's married to. Because I also email. like remember that you know that saying, it's like. It's gonna go create. The world's gonna end. It's when like when cats and dogs live together or something like that. I mean, now you have a very interesting like metaphor for unorthodox couples coming together against society's wishes or societal norms. You know, it's like a dog and a cat living together. This is this is horrible or whatever. And the dog can just look at you and be like, "You want to make something of it? I'll spend a few minutes whipping your ass. I don't care." Okay, uh, cool. So, so he's an old dog. He's on, he like, he loves the hunt, but he always is, is allowing himself to be dragged out of retirement, uh, for friends that ask for his help and people that he's owed favors to after a lifetime of favors. He kind of has the sound and energy of Sam Elliott and he's married to the, to the cat partner sidekick, um, from him, from his, from his past. Um, is there any other details about this guy that we want to add? Maybe a fun hobby, something a bit of a twist, or uh, a fun flaw, like maybe he's got a bad eye, maybe, maybe he's got the lazy eye. Um, oh wait, he is constantly having to fulfill her promises to help people. His promises? He is constantly having to fulfill his promises to help people. No, fulfill her promises to help people. Maybe she promises people, and then he has to help. He ends up helping. Oh, I see. So the cat will make the promise, and then drags the husband. Yeah. Kind of into it. Okay. Well, let, let's put the cat up. now. Is the the cat is also an investigator detective, or is the cat something different? Honestly, it'll be kind of cool having her as an uh, investigator as well. Okay. I think maybe having her as a pure investigator, maybe. Or, no, no. I just had a thought. I just had a thought. What if... What is it? She's a bard. She met the detective. You know how the detective always meets the, you know, the nightclub singer? Maybe she was the nightclub singer. And they fell Ooh. in love. That kind of trope, you know? So, maybe. if anything, she's a bard slash investigator. Ooh, Malice put Rogue. I Or Rogue. I love the kind of Batman Catwoman mm -hmm. dynamic that creates. So if we have a catfolk rogue investigator, that could be kind of fun. I just always like the idea of that, you know, because you usually don't see the nightclub singer getting with the private gum the private dick, the gumshoe. Yeah. And what if this is the one time that actually happens? 
See, and I think what's really cool is that because of the rogue part, you can just get a really really fat performance check so you have someone who pretends to be a bard in the daytime but at night they're breaking into houses they're stealing things but they're all doing it for like a greater cause as they're getting information for like the darker secrets of society so now you have this really cool like the guy who's got to be on the hunt the guy who's got to be like slapping slapping leathers on, on mean, the streets or honestly maybe not having give me having her as an investigator at all maybe she's just a bard rogue Hmm. Malice seems to be uh, kind of going along with the the pitch I did, um, and since Malice started it, I okay. I want to kind of that. However, however, I do think having a bard. Um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? You just said it, Michael. Why am I blanking? On? Nightclub singer. Thank you. A bard nightclub singer is a very cool concept, and if we don't make that character, I can easily slip that in to New Jack City, where nightclubs are huge. Um, so the catfolk rogue investigator performing at a nightclub, because I still kind of like that idea, and I think we can, we can really blend these two, and, and to kind of show how these people are from two different sides of the same coin, I think that's kind of a cool dynamic, because if there's nothing connecting these two people, why are they married? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially when one of them's like, I'm going to drag you into my problems. I kinda just like want to retire, like woman. Kind of like a uh, Lucy and Ricky type of scenario. Yeah, if there's nothing connecting them, then there's no reason they should be together. You know, there's no reason they would work. So I kind of like this idea that they're both... Obviously, they get along because they're very nice and civil and they love each other. But there's also this the shared hunt the shared hunt for the facts, for the mystery, but they go about it two very different ways, and they they remain alliances two different ways because the dog's like, you got me for life. You got my loyalty. You got my favors. The cat's like, you have my attention. Meow, meow. Husband, come here. And he's like, what? Half, link, half listening, and I thought you wanted my attention <laughs> with that. Ooh, okay, we could go further down the Batman and Catwoman thing. He arrested her and helped her reform. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think about that, Michael? Mm, I don't know. Just... Mm. I, 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 cause, I don't know. I guess we could go that route. Just, honestly, it's just, it's, we're going leading in super heavily on the Batman trope. Batman-Catwoman trope now. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, sorry, Pengu Chan was was uh, paying attention because we we're talking about Lucy and Ricky from uh, uh, I Dream. Not I Dream of Teen. From uh, I Love Lucy. Thank you. The I Blank Lucy show. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, so that, by, that's... By, yeah. Also, by the way, we named the horses in, our our wagon horses in Edge of Legend, uh, Lucy and Ethel. Absolutely, I had to give Michael a uh, a huge hero point for that. Um, okay, so how about this? Instead of he arrested her and helped her to reform, what if they just started relying on each other for information, you know? Um, so kind of like the cat before they started dating and get married, she have her own personal private cases that she would break into and do. And, but when she needed information about like society or like, like the cops and the government, she'd go to him for information. And whenever he needed stuff about like the underbelly and the dark streets, he'd go to her for information, and then eventually, they just fell in love and made it official. Yeah, and also keep in mind this is also during the twilight of the years. I was saying because they're retired now. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, now they're retired. So I would imagine they've been together for like 10, 20 years, yeah. and they they and they met really young, like in their teens. So it's it's one of those relationships that just has aged with time. Yeah. Like they're because like I said, they're, they're she's, she's like he's now a retiree and she's a housewife. Because like I said, I, I'm envisioning like you know what do you say, a housewife coat, an apron, maybe the, like little little spectacles, something. And like I said, for some reason in my mind, she's just now a big fluffy cat, a big fluffy older cat. I I kind of like that, like. She is still extremely adept at her her skills and talents, but like she's she's let life and time gracefully, you know, hang on her. Mm -hmm. She's 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 a little fluffier than she used to be. Her coat's a little grayer, you know. Uh, 
she she her eyes are still sharp, but there's some bags there. I kind of like that. I think that's yeah. I think that's really cute. I like that. I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. Let's see here. Um, making more noise. I'm I'm trying to cover all the notes we've yeah. we've pitched so far. Um, Is there anything else you guys, uh, because, uh, let's see, Malice posted she overhears things at the nightclub and tries to help. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good, uh, a really good way to do it. One of the yeah. notes I put for her is that her loyalty is to the case that gets her attention, yeah. whereas the dog's loyalty is to the people that brings him mm -hmm. the case. And I think that's kind of an interesting dynamic. Yeah. So she, obviously, she's working at a nightclub. She's going to hear about some juicy cases, and she's like, oh. And, that's not cool. I gotta solve that. Yeah, and obviously, like I said before, they're in their twilight years now. She probably might not, you know, be working at the nightclub as a singer anymore. Like I said, they're he's retired, she's at home. Now they're doing, you know, husband and wife hair brain adventures. Yep. Um, one second here. Um, so I'm also th seeing my mind's eye also. Like sometimes she's. She's baking pies, leaving them on the windowsill. She's kind of like, um, ah, oh man, I forgot what's her name. Uh, Mrs. Wilson from uh, Dennis and Menace, kind of, but in, as a as a cat. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. Singer at a nightclub, now probably an owner uh, or manager. Now manager. Um, breaks into places, steals information for personal investigations. Um... But Underworld, for him, put Law slash The Streets. Should we, should we think of a name name for them? Because yeah, I really I like the name uh, Precious for uh, the cat. Let's let's put that as a tentative yes. Uh, people in the chat, we need to name these characters because there's nothing more important to a character than their name. Uh, so, so far, and, and yes, Malice, I have definitely made a note. Uh, often drags husband dog on cases against his will. Um, so yeah, uh, we need a name for the dog and the cat that got married. Um, Prasinius? Mr. Mihara, thank you so much for the suggestion. What is it? Mr. Bigglesworth? Miss B that... Big Miss Bigglesworth. Mrs. Bigglesworth. Okay. I like that. It's funny. It, remind it definitely reminds me of Mr. Bigglesworth. Precious Miss Bigglesworth. No, it's a Precious Bigglesworth. Precious Bigglesworth. Okay, now here's the question. Are they going to take each other's name? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to have their own last name? Like Precious. I don't think I know what Precious is. I know Precious. I don't know I'm thinking because Precious would definitely be a great name as a, like a name for a nightclub singer who's kind of like the name Cher or something like that, you know? Or Megan the Stallion. I, yeah, I, I see Precious being a cute nickname, a stage right. name and a cute name that the husband calls her all the time. Yeah. It, maybe her real name could be like Priscilla or Priscilla and Precious is just kind of the, like, like the, 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 the delineation from that. So her name's like Priscilla, Priscilla Posey or something. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a name, but like Priscilla something. And she's just called AKA um, Precious. Panku Chan has put up Bastet and Anubis. I definitely love the idea of those two dating. Not that I'm fixated with Egyptian deities, shifty eyes. Um, Miss Mahara says it's a name I made up. Ah, okay, that would make sense. Um, maybe. Let's, let's worry about the first names first, because that's going to be the thing that yeah. really encapsulates yeah. them. And then what, what about, the uh, what about la uh, the name for the, for the dog? Yeah, maybe that might help. Let's start off with the name for the dog. Also, since these two are pretty old, I'm thinking about making them like level eight, level ten. Yeah. What do we think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make level, them level 10. I think level ten would be not would be decent. Yeah, it gives it gives good variety for the multi-classing and archetypes that we're putting into them. Um, let's think. What's a good name for a bloodhound? Oh my god, Beauregard. Yeah. Be Beauregard I like that. I like for the, that. yeah, I'm the Sam Elliott Bloodhound, definitely Beauregard. 
Uh, I'm going to wait for Chad oh, to... Uh... The, wife, the wife will call him Bo. Oh, yeah. Oh, and maybe maybe Bo's got that deep Sam Elliott voice. Or but, Bowie. Uh... Or Bowie. The wife calls him Bowie. Ooh, um, Malice says Theo. Like Theodore? Uh, Theo could work. Mm -hmm. Theodore. I like Beauregard. I still like uh, Beauregard. Maybe we can have a compromise. Maybe his name could be Beauregard Theodore last name. And now we have a very Emmett the third. Emmett Beauregard Theodore Emmett, Emmett the third. If you have a blood if you have a bloodhound, he has to be called Copper. Aw, from Fox and the Hound. I think that's copyright, but still it's a really good name. Oh, yeah, I remember because look. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> I'm a hound dog. Boo. Oh, I just thought of this because we okay. We have a lizard. We have now a dog and a cat. We have a crow. We're creating rescue rangers. Oh God, we are. Yeah, one of these days I want to do an NPC build with you all and just make a normal humanoid and not an animal-based one. No. Nothing wrong with animal-based ones. We have amazing animal-based NPCs uh, that I would love to put in the show any way I can. But I'm like, what about dwarves? What about halflings? And then Chad's like, what about them? We want monkey people. Okay, fine. I'm just waiting for gnolls to become a playable race, honestly. Yeah, the gnolls and the gnolls should be coming out soon. I yeah. believe. I think they're uh, next out year. Soon. Next year. Mm. Uh, yeah, Pengu Chan. I will say this. I don't know about Duchess or Marie, but when uh, when Michael said having a fat fluffy cat, my brain immediately went to Duchess um, or or Marie. So I, I think we're we're both in that same wavelength. Uh, so we need a cat name. So precious. I think it's a really cute nickname, really cute stage name. Do we want to call her Priscilla? Do we want to call her something else? I like Priscilla. Okay. So what about the dog's name? Are we going with Beauregard, Theodore, Emmett the Third? I don't know about the third, but I definitely like Beauregard, Theodore, Emmett, I, but it, yeah, I always think numbers when they have three names. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, I can see that with like society, but I, this is his full name. I would imagine because what I was what I was trying to say is that Beauregard Theodore gives you a great culture of nicknames. So maybe maybe the girl, maybe his wife calls him Bo or Bobo or something really sweet and affectionate. Bowie, B Bowie. I think it depends on on the on the vibe. Um, I think. Uh, Everyone on the force calls him BT, you know, okay. and that's like that's like his old like war name back when he was like roughing it on the city streets with his with his other detective friends. Like, well, oh, BT's got this. Miyahara going, the wife calls him Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Oh, certainly, it's a it's a very cute. Name. So he's Beauregard. It's like oh Boo Boo, and he's just like I hate it when you call me that, but I kind of kind of really love it when you call me that. No, maybe he's like um, only in private. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, what you like, woman? Don't call me that in front of my friends. They know me as BT, not Boo Boo. Um, okay, so let's come up with the last name. Um, Emmett, Emmett I, I see the, the, the connection, but it doesn't roll off the tongue. Beauregard, Theodore, Emmett, it kind of it kind of it kind of falls a little flat. Maybe we need something more. What about Tribado? You know what? Seriously, Beauregard and all that stuff. Isn't is oh God, isn't that the family name of uh, from King of the Hill? Um, God, uh, the the one that's always sad. The guy. Who Bill. Got his Bill. Leg shot off? Bill. No, Bill. Oh gosh. Uh, they did. I, they did an episode where they went to New, New Orleans. That's right. That's right. I think I think Bill might be short for Beauregard in like that tradition, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look it up. Pengu is saying, "I'm sorry, I'm still rooting for Bigglesworth." Bigglesworth. It's it's a good name. I mean, maybe we can make it Priscilla Bigglesworth for the cat. They don't have to have the same last names. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Beauregard Theodore Lee. 
Ooh. I do kind of like that. Beauregard Theodore, Beauregard Theodore Lee. Yeah, that's got a lot of... That's that's good. Oh, Very Southern, uh, very Southern. Yeah, so for all you King of the Hill fans out there, uh, Bill, Bill Dotrieve, oh. his full name, his full Louisiana name is William Fontaine uh, de la Tour. Uh, I'm sorry, no, well, the whole thing is William Fontaine de la Tour Dotrieve. I like, the name Font oh. I like the last name Fontaine, actually. Fontaine, Beauregard Fontaine. Beauregard Theodore Fontaine. Yeah, I... You know what? That's too good. That's too good. I gotta add that. I like that. And yeah, Malice is saying, so he's Cajun. Maybe. I mean, I kind of like the Sam Elliott cowboy vibe of yeah. voice, but he doesn't have to be Cajun. Lee, he's Southern. Please. He's Southern. He's, uh, he's just nondescript Southern amalgamation of a dog yeah. person. Let me ask you this, Malice. Would you prefer him being Cajun or like a Southern Texan kind of voice? And that'll, and I think that'll decide between Fontaine or Lee. I just like, honestly, it, Fontaine just rolls off. Lee is, is, sounds a little harsh at the end, you know? Well, see, that's, that's what, what I, what I like about Lee is that you got like, hold on, let me get my hand in frame here. Beauregard, Theodore, Lee. It's, it's a graceful dismount that's not mm. too rough. Beauregard, Theodore, Fontaine. Keeps hey, the rhythm is saying uh, Cajun. All right, so we got one vote for Cajun. Because I, I still uh, do I... like have, giving him kind of a kind of a cowboy, you know, cadence. Yeah, like, but Cajun's yep, not really. Reckon. Cajun's mm -hmm. very different. Cajun's more like um, it's a lot more staccato, mm -hmm. and and kind of mumbly. So it'd be more like um. So if 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 the I reckon like I reckon what we have here is a murder. Then the Cajun would be like, I reckon what we got here now a murder. Like, Cajun's a lot more... No, I, I've see heard, I heard Cajun, slow Cajun before. I've heard that. Slow Cajun, absolutely, but you still have that kind of... Because I, I, I see him, like, he, t he wants to take his time. That's why he's so good. He takes his time to take it all in, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, they can be slower. I can see him be like, what we have here now is a murder. You know, versus like what we have here. Pengu now makes a uh, uh, Pengu makes a good point. She said Cajun puts me in the mind of Gambit and Rogue for the X Men. Like mm, Rogue yeah. is definitely a slow Cajun. Well, well Rogue. Southern. Rogue southern, is, um, I guess. Yeah, Southern. Rogue. Rogue is in Cajun. Rogue is from. Southern. Um, she's Southern, but she's it's it's a different thing. She she speaks with uh, Alabama, Alabama Georgia area. She's more of like a, a Southern Belle, which they constantly refer to her as. She's a Southern Belle. Yeah. And Rogue and, and Gambit is a Cajun, which is more of that kind of like, that, hey, now, yo, we're going <laughs> to have ourselves a really nice party. Like, they're very, they're, they're, uh, they're different. They're very different people, but they're both from the South. That is true. Yeah. All right. So Malice says that he likes the font. I'm sorry, Malice. I didn't mean to uh, assume I don't believe I know your gender. Uh, Malice says um, that they like the Fontaine Southern Gentleman. Okay, so we could, you know what we could do? We could we could keep the name Fontaine for that kind of fa uh, fancy Southern Gentleman, mm -hmm. but instead of making him talk with a Cajun accent, we make him more of a Georgia accent like what they had in Knives Out. Yeah. <laughs> you Americans, I know, right, Pinker Chan? We're so weird with our regional dialects. Uh, okay, so let's go with Fontaine, and I'm going to put uh, Georgian. Georgian is like a, like in like a, a thing here, so I can understand how he's supposed to sound. And I kind of like have, have the idea of giving, uh, what is it, a precious kind of a Chicago cadence. What part of Chicago are you thinking? Because Chicago like, is like kind I'm of thinking, a... When I think precious, I'm also think, thinking when she was younger... She was, you know, Windy City mobsters and gangsters type of deal. Let, let me let me rephrase this. Uh, give me give me a movie star that you think she sounds like. I'm not sure of any movie stars I know of that's actually Chicago wise. Like like old like old oh, uh, movies. Okay. Um, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, she was the the first. 
uh, she was on the poster of uh, Andy Dufresne from uh, the first poster from Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption. Oh, who was that? That was that was Rita Midwest, Hayworth. Was it Rita Hayworth? Rita Hayworth. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into her voice, but I'm assuming it's more of a transatlantic. Because like Chicago, I have I have cousins from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Chicago accent is not what most people think it is. It's not like this whole like like. Yeah, and we're gonna like come up and see me sometime. It's 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 more like um, how to describe Chicago. It's like, oh yeah, you're gonna go down and get the uh, the two brats. You're gonna get if you're gonna get the two brats. Make sure that you uh, uh, swing by and get two brewskis because we're gonna like wicked. It's, I mean, it's like I wouldn't be I would Boston. not be mad. For, I would not be mad at that either. <laughs> if she was just like 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 uh, yeah, me and my husband we're uh, we're gonna go do these two crimes and uh, beat up these two douchebags. Of that yeah, like I said, mid, a Midwestern housewife. She, that's what she is right now. How about, mm, okay, so we want more of a Midwest, Midwest housewife. I'm just offering this as, as an idea. What if we do more of like, like an adorable, like, oh, don't you know, kind of like this really sweet Fargo kind of. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Give her a Bronx accent. Ooh, what do you think of a Bronx accent? I, 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 as soon as you said the Fargo thing, I'm leaning towards that now. Okay, 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 okay. So now I'm thinking about I'm do a about, Bronx like, thing for another character. True, true. Because I'm thinking she's a tough gal from the streets who participates and lives in the underworld of that city, and that's kind of her her bloodline. Um, but she's retired now. Oh, absolutely. She's gone legit. But, oh, absolutely, a thousand percent. But like you know. You can leave the underground, but the underground doesn't leave yeah. you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we could we could make her Fargo, which would be hilarious. Be like, oh yeah, I used to stab and shank people all the time in the streets, don't you know? They come I like after that. me for my I purse. Really and I like just... that. <laughs> yeah, because like because Bronx, I, it's such it's so weird how the two voices give two completely different personalities. Because like, sweet and innocent, but definitely will stab you in the face, Fargo. And then Bronx is kind of like that sultry, that tough, that uh, kind of wink and a smile. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Malice is saying, white man can't jump Perez. White man can't jump Perez. Oh, man, I haven't seen that movie in a minute. Who who was that? Was that uh, Rosa, Rosa Perez? Rosie Perez, yeah, Rosie Perez. She had kind of like that Cuban kind of cadence. Yeah, yeah. She is beauty, she is grace, she will stab you in the face. Yeah. I Like I said, I like the Fargo. Like Midwest Midwest housewife, but sometimes she'll slip things in. Like I'm gonna stab you in the face in that sweet, you know, mom kind of tone. Okay, so I'm seeing I'm seeing like two different things here, but I'm gonna put a note down for both. Um, and we will we will uh, cross that bridge if and when they get voted. Uh, so to recap. This has been a really fun and exciting story we're telling with these characters. Uh, so we have Beauregard Theodore Fontaine and his wife, uh, Priscilla Precious, a.k.a. Precious, Bigglesworth, because we didn't decide that they had to have the same last name, and I know Penguin kind of Chan's a fan of that. Um, investigators, one is a Bloodhound uh, Investigator Detective, level 10. The other one is a Catfolk Rogue Investigator, level 10. Uh, the... The husband, uh, Beauregard, retired from a detective unit of the town guard. He doesn't want to do this, but he is a very loyal friend, will always help out uh, people or any call in favors after a lifetime of racking them up. Even though reluctant, he still loves the hunt. And he, he kind of has that Sam Elliott energy. But, but you're complaining the entire time. Oh, I, I gotta that, has to be, that has to be a, a, a personality trait. Right, hold on, put them there. Uh, will complain whole time. Okay. Um, married to cat partner sidekick from his past. He is the law, he is the streets, and he will complain the whole time. The cat folk rogue investigator level 10, singer at a nightclub but is now the manager, breaks into places and steals information for personal investigations. Uh, she has loyalty to the cases that grab her attention. Often drags husband dog on cases against his will. She is the underworld. She is the dark and seedy. And uh, her name is Priscilla Precious Bigglesworth. She's either Fargo or Bronx. But we will probably go Fargo. But we will lean into that when we 
uh, vote on her. So this husband and wife duo that goes around solving crimes in their, their old age, uh, who are still living joyfully, even though the husband just wants to sip his lemonade and eat his sandwiches and do his Sudoku. Yeah. I think we're good. I think we're good now. We have a good outline. Yeah, I think we have a great character yeah. because now everything about these two is a story in and of itself. So if you run into these characters, they can not only push plot along, but they can be very fun to just interact with. Malice posted her curiosity gets the better of her and his loyalty keeps and oh and his loyalty keeps him around. So we're kinda of saying there might be some like strain on the relationship where like he's frustrated with her but he can't leave and, and she doesn't want him to go, but she's constantly looking for something more exciting or something. Mm -hmm. That could be interesting. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think we're at that time now, though. Yeah, we have gone an hour, I think, past our normal time. But yeah. This is good, because I love building characters with you guys, the chat, and I would love, I cannot wait, we need two more characters, and then we can have the official vote, and we may save the official vote for after the Halloween episodes are done, but once we get them, we will do the official vote for which one of these amazing characters will become canonical in Edge of Legends. Uh, so we're going to do a quick uh, goodbye. Uh, Michael Pow, let everyone watching know who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, I am Michael Pow, and you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which are at my, Mr. Kapow, that's M-R-K-A-P-A-O, and that's Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter. Or you can follow me on my Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Michael Pow does stuff, because I do a lot of stuff. And I also started a new YouTube channel called Fantastic Tales of Adventure, where I do my uh, TTRPG videos. I've been doing a lot of uh, Reddit readings relating to TTRPG, D&D, &D, and all that stuff. And on Thursdays, yeah, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Toyzilla Network channel here, I'm part of, uh, I co-host... Toyzilla Live, which is a toy and nostalgia show. And that's it for me. How about you, PJ? Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. So my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me everywhere online uh, at pj.mcgaw. Facebook, Instagram. I'm never on Twitter. Um, so is the big two. Uh, and when I'm not here with my man Michael Powell on Tuesdays, uh, sitting with you guys at the table, I am the GM for Edge of Legends. Uh, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here in the U.S. If you are uh, abroad, thank you so much for your time. Um, also, this month, starting tomorrow and for the next four weeks, we are doing a spooky, scary, super gross, super cool Halloween series. Each one will be a one-shot. Each one will feature a different one of the cosmic horror elder gods of the world and show you some of the madness hidden in the nightmare of Dalton Shire. So tune in all month. We got some new music, special effects. We're gonna make it whole a whole show. Um, we're gonna have some special guests, including um, the GM or DM, I should say, of um, the Friday show that I do, Secret Ryan Omega. We'll be guest starring as one of our special guests for the very first show, uh, and hopefully we'll have a good time. And uh, yeah, and when I'm not doing this on Wednesdays and Tuesdays, Fridays, as I said, I'm doing Secret with Ryan Omega and a few friends of mine from two years ago as we take the D&D high school kids and put them into college and see what madness comes from that. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I love these new characters. Uh, and until next time, we're looking forward to seeing you once again at the table. Same nat time, same nat station. Bye, guys. Oh, and if you're in the States, go vote. Yes, go vote. Americans, go do it. It's your civic duty. Go vote.